Okay, so I'm here with Brooke Stratton and we're both out of our comfort zone. We're holding the littlest football I think I've ever seen. I don't know if this is meant to help us or hinder us. Brooke's a long jumper and I'm today going to take her on in handballing competition. So we'll see how we go. I think we're a little far back. We've put the measuring tape out to seven metres and five centimetres, which is the jump that Brooke did in Perth to break the Australian record. Why did you have to jump so far? Look how far back we are. Yeah, I sort of wish I didn't jump as far. It would have made it a bit easier for us both. <laughs> All right, I should let you go first, but Collingwood, really? <laughs> How long have you barracked for Collingwood for? Oh, well, I was sort of forced to barrack for Collingwood um, with my parents barracking for them. So it's um, Russell and Paul as well. Yeah, so I blame my parents. Okay. But no, I still have fair. my teeth, as you said, so. <laughs> I do admit I did say that. Sorry, Colleen. Um, all right, you go first. Thank you. This will be interesting. This will be interesting. <laughs> um, I think the circles needed to be a bit bigger. Do you know what we're going to do? If we don't score on this next one, we're going to move to my long jump PB, which is 4 metres 15. Oh, I might make things a bit easier. From the grade 5 school pit of Eubank Primary School. So. We'll move, we'll move forward. Oh! Yes! All right. You did Bye it. Night. All right, let's go for a low one. Yes! <laughs> Competition. We've worked it out. <laughs> so your dad, Russell, coaches you? Yeah. I think a lot of athletes would think, oh my goodness, imagine your mum or dad coaching you. How does that work? Yeah, it works pretty well. Um, like me and dad are pretty close and um, yeah, we, we haven't really had a lot of trouble with each other um, since he's been coaching me. Like we obviously have our little arguments here and there, but it's, it's been working really well. And um, yeah, I think it's extremely special to, to have shared my journey with him and, and have him um, travel around the world with me competing. You started athletics from quite a young age. Like a lot of the elite guys, you started at Little Athletics. The yeah. Nana Wadding Little Athletics? I did, I started with Nana Wadding in under six, so. Under six, a long time ago. Russell and you, you seem like you're on a little adventure together with the yeah. athletes. It's, it's exciting, it's a, it's, a, it's a good relationship to watch. But um, Gary Bourne, the great Gary Bourne who coached Bronwyn Thompson, yep. he's, he's got a bit of an input as well into your training. Yeah, um, Gary writes my gym program, so um, I started doing that in December last year. and. I think, yeah, I've really gained a lot of strength and power from that program. It's very specific to long jump. Yeah. Um, a lot of single leg exercises, which I basically finish gym and I walk out like extremely fatigued in my legs, but it's been so good having his help um, and guidance with me and dad. And he also coaches Chelsea, who's also going for the long jump. So you guys obviously get along really well. It's a, it's yeah. a weird relationship to watch. As a previous runner, you see all the runner types get out there and they're quite competitive and really focused on themselves. Jumpers and field eventers seem to be the laconic, laid back, fun types of the athletics team. And you guys seem to help each other out there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's been so good having Chelsea. Um, pushing me the past few seasons. Um, yeah, she made the move to, to Queensland to train with Gary and yeah, she's improved so much. So it, w it was so amazing to see her qualify and um, yeah, it's, it's gonna be great having her over there. It's, it's um, you can sort of relax a little bit with a bit of company out there. So I'm yeah. sure it'd be great. It's always good, I think, with um, battles. Sometimes it's annoying when you're so far from the rest of the world when you can't get competition, but if you've got yeah. a good homegrown battle, um, and you respect each other, it seems to bring out the best in you. It's like uh, back in the day, Melinda Gainsford, Taylor yeah. and Kathy Freeman, they used to have great battles on, on the domestic circuit and then obviously they both went over and made Olympic finals. But I spoke to um, Dave Colbert who I think went and spoke, he was the guest speaker yeah, at your Nana yeah, Wadding Athletics Dinner. Yep. Um, and so Dave Colbert is a two-time silver Commonwealth Games medalist and also an Olympic finalist. And, and he was saying to me that he said that you have great bounce off the board and also amazing um, aggression on the runway. Yeah. Is that something that you work on in training? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I've got really good spring, but if I'm not taking off in the right position, that's when I basically just go up and straight down. So it's a matter of getting the right angle and um, not losing the speed that you've um, maintained on the runway. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot to long jump and it's quite technical. Um, but yeah, like with Gary's help, he's helped tweak a few things with my takeoff position and my running as well. So hopefully over there um, in Rio, us long jumpers can, um, yeah, can do really well. We have Gary Honey, um, won a silver medal at the Olympics in long jump. Colbert, obviously, final. We've got Jai Tarima, yeah. who is a big fan of yours as well. You've got a lot of the, the great long jumpers of our country following your career closely. Oh. Um, he got silver at Sydney Olympics, and um, females have never won a medal in the long jump, yeah. which I think is a tad unfair, because Bronwyn Thompson probably yeah, deserved to win a medal in 2004, yeah. and is a, is a superstar. And yeah. the girl that we're talking about, finishing fourth at the Olympics, you've just jumped further than her. So you must be now heading into Rio with a lot of confidence. Yeah, definitely really confident. Um, it's just a matter of staying fit and healthy in the meantime and um, yeah, getting all the competitions in that I need, um, gain a little bit more experience. But yeah, if, if I can jump anything around 7.05, I'll definitely put myself um, in the mix for a medal. But I obviously don't want to put too much pressure no. on myself. I just want to go over there and enjoy the experience and just give it everything I, I can. Oh. Yes, it worked, I distracted you. <laughs> Right, my go. Oh, oh, so close. <laughs> well, we're getting closer. Yeah. Oh, yay! <laughs> so you're named in your first senior team to head to the Commonwealth Games, and obviously yeah. you were really stoked, but unfortunately you got a back injury and had to Yeah, out. yeah, so um, after jumping 660 in 2011, I had a few health issues, um, changed my diet up fully, um, and then yeah, I sort of had two and a half years where I had no improvements with my long jump distance and very frustrating time. Um, so that's why I was so excited when I jumped 670, yeah. which was very exciting after a few years of no improvement. Um, yeah, was basically training my butt off after nationals and yeah, felt a bit of pain in my back in the gym. I just didn't know what to do. Um, and then yeah, a week before I was supposed to leave, I found out I had a stress fracture in my back, which it was absolutely devastating. How did you mentally then take that step back and deal with the fact that there was going to be a Commonwealth Games that's going to be saturating the television screen in the next couple of months and you should have been there but you're sitting back home in Melbourne and watching? To avoid the Commonwealth Games, I ended up flying over to Europe with a friend. Just didn't watch it on TV obviously because I was in um, France and Spain at the time. So I just tried to sort of, I don't know, not not really get too involved in it because I was pretty down, but yeah. wanted to just enjoy my time off and, and also stay positive and do all the right things. Take us through that jump where you broke Bronwyn Thompson's Australian record. I think it was two weeks prior to Perth, I jumped a PB of 694. Yeah, I was feeling really good and um, warmed up really well and basically hopped onto the runway on my first jump and I did a shocker of a jump and it was, I think, I think it might have been a foul, but it was. I looked at the tape; it was around 680, and I was like, "God, if I'm if I'm jumping horribly and jumping 680, like imagine if I could get one right." And then, funnily enough, my second jump, I came in. I just everything like the wind, stars oh, alive. The wind yeah. was perfect. 2.0, weather was perfect. Yeah, it, it was just meant to be on that night, I think. And yeah, just did it feel huge? I mean, we're talking. So from here to there. We can't even get the ball through the, yeah. the circles. Um, it is a long way. Yeah. Do you feel um, like you're flying through the air? But yeah, now that jump felt felt amazing. and It looked um, amazing. I just remember looking up to the crowd and just seeing my dad just look so happy. And he, like, I think he knew that it was yeah. going to be a big jump. So um, yeah. But it's still, I don't know, it still hasn't really sunk in that Got it. the Australian I mean, record holder. Only two Australian women ever have jumped over seven metres and now you're the girl who's jumped further than anyone else in Australia <laughs> ever has. Now the girl whose record you broke, Bronwyn Thompson, amazing athlete. Um, she was such a dedicated athlete. I spoke to her overnight about you and she said she's been watching you since you were a youngster and she knew that you had great speed um, yep. on, on the runway and that you were a dedicated athlete. So it must be really nice hearing. Oh, definitely. So I look looked up to Bronwyn my whole career basically I still do look up to her as an athlete even though she's retired so um, yeah to hear those things from her it's, it's really special. 
All right, and then you decide this one's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> while you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Stop now. Woo. Oh, oh, that was close. Right, one more each. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was basically in. Oh, you know what, I think the Olympic in. rings are against us today, but they won't be. <laughs> they won't become all this rules. Thank you so much. Um, Bronwyn Thompson told me to say to you, being a fellow jumper, that you don't say good luck, you say big jump vibes. So oh, okay. The whole of us will be behind you and sending you big jump vibes in Rio in August. Thank you so much.